Physics in video games aren't anything new. You can go all the way back to Pong, which used some basic physics calculations to have the ball bounce off the paddles and walls in a realistic way. But as we enter a new era of gaming thanks to virtual reality, developers are really starting to use physics to change the way we play and interact in video games forever. If we look back to some of the earlier VR games like Arizona Sunshine, you can see when we go to touch a wall, car or any object, our hands just simply go through them. We even go through a car door. Opening doors requires clicking and holding on the door handle. You can see your hand disappears. You can only manipulate the door from this one point. Trying to push the door with your hand does nothing. You can place guns or other items on tables, but once you pick the item up, they'll simply just go through other objects or items in the world. Comparing this to the latest zombie VR game, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, you can see it's not possible to put your hands through walls, cars or any other object in the game. Weapons and items will collide with other objects and items in the world which all adds to the sense of immersion and it feels far more realistic. If you're opening and closing a door, you still require to turn the knob but your hands don't disappear this time. Once the door's open we can then use our hands to then push the door from any part of it without having to grab the handle. It all feels much more natural and less awkward. But how does this affect the gameplay? Well with Arizona Sunshine for example, there's no melee combat. If a zombie gets in your face you can't push them back or use any weapon other than a gun to kill them. If we go back to Saints and Sinners, you can now push them back to give you some space with a melee weapon, like this axe for example, or even grab them by the head and stab them in the brains. Bombworks takes things further with every item or object being physics based. This allows you to flip tables for cover, or you can grab a barrel and carry it for mobile cover against the turret. Being able to interact with both the world and enemies in a more realistic and natural way opens up more possibilities in how you move through the world and take on confrontations. So let's take a look at the melee combat in more detail. For a long time, it was believed that it was important to keep everything one-to-one -one with the movements of your real hands. So if you move your hand in the real world, your virtual hand would have to match up perfectly one-to-one -to, -one to avoid any sort of disconnect. The downside to this is that when you're holding large heavy weapons, your brain knows that it should be heavy, but it feels weightless and it breaks immersion. It also poses issues that the player is able to simply wiggle their wrists to kill enemies. A lot of developers are still using the one-to-one -one method, with games like Asgard's Wrath using a parry system. You have to block income attacks to build up a rage meter, and once the enemy makes a special move, if you block it, it then gives you the opportunity to counter and remove the enemy's armour. Once the armour is removed, you're free to attack. I'm not a big fan of this personally, as it makes the combat very defensive, you end up stood waiting around for the enemy to attack so that you can block, as you simply can't kill them until their armour has been removed. Blade and Sorcery was one of the first games to really use physics in melee in a convincing way. Now swords bang together, you can balance an axe on the end of your sword, or use it to hook an enemy's shield allowing you to stab your opponent. Weapons would hit the enemy rather than ghosting through them, you can stab and kill enemies in many brutal and realistic ways, and this all got the attention of the VR gaming community. They use physics on heavier weapons to add a slight delay, this gives them the feeling of weight which all works incredibly well and you don't feel that disconnect people were expecting. If we go back to Saints and Sinners, they actually have an option for ghost hands. This shows the position of my real world hands in relation to the virtual ones. We can see that small, lightweight weapons like knives are pretty much one to one. But as you go heavier, if you see when I swing this axe around, there's a delay to with my movements. You need to use both hands to use these heavier weapons properly, and it's simply not possible to wiggle your swords, axes or any large weapons to kill enemies. This allows the combat to be much more dynamic and less like a scripted quick time event. In Saints and Sinners, the amount of force you apply to your swing matters. Zombies only die when you hit them in the brain, so a little swing to the head will just bounce off. You really have to use some force, and axes can get stuck in the skull of a zombie, forcing you to have to jerk and yank the axe to get it out. <laughs> <clears throat> if you don't use enough force with knives, they can also get stuck in the head of zombies. But the zombies might actually still be alive. You either have to yank them out and try again, or you can grab the zombie by the head with your other hand and then jolt the blade in further. 
It feels fantastic in VR and your brain doesn't seem to notice that what you're doing in real life doesn't match up perfectly what's happening in the virtual world. I personally much prefer this type of combat over the one-to-one -one type systems and I hope it becomes the standard moving forward for more VR games. Let's talk guns. Guns and VR are a perfect fit. There's nothing more satisfying than having a pistol in your virtual hand lining up the sights for a headshot. It's a completely different way to play and mirrors the same actions as to real life very closely making it incredibly immersive. I don't think physics are changing the way we use guns much in VR, especially compared to something like melee combat, but just like with melee, some developers are using physics to simulate weight. Again if we go back to Saints and Sinners, you can see this. Simply things like not being able to ghost your hand through an object or a wall all helps with both immersion and gameplay and you have to be more conscious about the surroundings and how you manoeuvre your weapons around. Boneworks actually does some interesting things with your in-game shoulder. In Boneworks they've actually taken things to extremes with your in-game avatar being a physics based object. So when you pull a two handed weapon up to your shoulder it actually affects the amount of recoil the gun has. The shoulder will actually stop the gun from kicking back. You can also do things like place a gun on a table and then put your hand on top of the barrel to reduce recoil. Again, using physics opens up more options, more ways to play and makes the gameplay feel much more dynamic. To many people, Boneworks is the pinnacle in terms of utilising physics in virtual reality because, as already mentioned, everything in Boneworks is a physics-based item, including your own body. This allows you to manipulate any object in the world, but it can also cause some issues. Your own body can sometimes get in the way as you try to move around clipping against objects which can cause some jank. There are puzzles in Boneworks requiring you to remove objects to get around and past areas and sometimes it can feel downright awkward just trying to move a box. But when it all works as expected it feels fantastic and Boneworks gives me a sense of embodiment and presence like no other game. And this leads on to the future. There's no doubt in my mind that virtual reality and physics are the future of gaming. Maybe they won't become the standard way we play, but VR isn't going anywhere and I think it will have its place alongside regular non-VR games. Developers are only just starting to tap into the true potential of this media and what's possible with virtual reality. And I think some balancing needs to be done with what adds to the game and what gets in the way. Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is a very good example that seems to have struck a nice balance and from everything that I've read with what Valve's doing with Half-Life Alex, they seem to be taking a similar approach. If anyone's actually listening to this who hasn't tried virtual reality yet, then now has never been a better time to jump in. No amount of videos will ever do it justice to show you how incredibly immersive VR is. It's like the Matrix. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself.